Welcome everyone. This is Lisa with Queen Bee Creations. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I go live every Monday and Thursday at 2.30 to teach you guys how to make usually a fun fold card. So today's card is this cute little barn fold card. And it features the cutest cows bundle, which is in the new mini catalog. So that's this stamp set right here. It's got these cute little cows and they actually punch out. So there's a little punch and I'm going to show you what all the little pieces are. Um, and we will make a, an adorable card. I think you're going to love it. So let's put you down on my desk and take a look. See how cute is this little stamp set? Got all these little farm elements and some cute little sentiments in it. And then we're going to be using the punch to punch out the body and the head today. Um, but there's also some other pieces in here. Um, and so we'll punch out just some pieces just so I can show you what they do and how they match up to the stamp set. But for this card, what you're going to need is a piece of cardstock that is 11 inches by four and a quarter, scored at five and a half. And then I took it, this is about six inches wide, a little bit wider because I was trying to make sure I could fit a strip of adhesive on here. So I have put adhesive sheet on the back. Our adhesive sheets are six inches wide by 11 inches tall. So I had to cut about an inch off the bottom. And then I wrote the word adhesive on the back because on the white, I can't really tell. Uh, when we do that on the back of colored cardstock, you can obviously see it's there, but the white, I kind of have to remind myself that this is available to make sticky stuff. And I wanted sticky stuff for these pieces here um, for making our door. And then I have a strip of some just basic white that I'm gonna be stamping on and punching out. I have a little scrap of red and I wanted a little heart and I wanted it a different colored red. This might even be sweet sorbet. I think this is real red. But I wanted a small little heart because, you know, Valentine's Day is coming up, right? So I used the little heart out of here. This is the bee builder punch. This has been so fun because it not only makes the bee, but I've made this a speech bubble. And I've used the hearts. And with... Um, St. Patrick's Day coming up, it was occurring to me that I don't have a St. Patrick's Day stamp set. And so did you know you can make a clover out of hearts? And so that might be something I use that punch for as well. So like I said, there's those basic shapes again. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with some stamping. Let's see, I need a piece of white for the inside and that's going to be four inches by five and a quarter and it occurs to me I'm going to need some that does not have adhesive sheet on the back because that hangs off so I'm just going to grab a piece here I think what I did was use about three eighths of an inch. I showed you guys the cards um, Thursday. As I was playing around with this, as I made the door to the barn, it like hit me that it wasn't quite in scale with what I wanted for the cows. The door either looked really big or looked really small, which, you know, probably doesn't matter but I was messing around with it anyway. And so half an inch was too wide and a quarter an inch is what I'm using down here. That seemed too narrow. So I ended up with three eighths of an inch for this up here. Let's go ahead and cut a few strips, like I said, of the quarter inch. Mm -hmm. 
just while I have the trimmer out. I can punch this out. This out of my way. For the cows, I'm I wanted the cows to be one facing the other. There's two bodies. This one has the udder on it, and this one doesn't. It's the one without the udder that's going to punch out of our punch. So I went ahead and stamped this one already and fussy cut it. And then we'll need two of the heads. And there's two. One is winking and one's not. But they're both going to cut out with the punch. So that will be easy enough to do. Bring in our memento. You know what I should have done? I know you've seen me do it before, but I usually will punch out like a template. So this is what it's going to punch out. And let me just show you how I do this. I will line up my stamp inside the little holes. Then I'm going to take my block and just set it down on top and then stamp both of these at the same time. And then that's going to line up with my punch. So when I go to punch this, they're already aligned and I can do both of them at the same time. Did y'all know that trick? I know I've shown it before, but there's usually somebody new watching that might not have seen that before. Then for my second cow, all I actually need is the head. Because I've already fussy cut his body. Inside the card, I have a little more stamping where I stamp the sentiment and then our flowers. And you'll notice my flowers go all the way across, but the stamp only has the three flowers in it. And I did that by starting out in the middle. some scrap paper here. So I just start out in the middle and I'm letting it hang off the edge so that I can change up the height. as I come and stamp the other ones. And you'll notice these other ones actually go off the edge of the card, and I'm totally fine with that. I actually even kind of prefer it. Yes, their head would work with the wobbles. That would be cute. 
good idea. I was talking with someone at the stamp camp on Saturday and they said actually the cows were smaller than they anticipated. Because they are, you know, they're pretty small. But I think they had to do that in order to make it fit on the punch. He's about two inches wide and about an inch and a quarter tall. And then you add the head so it does get a little bigger, but still kind of small. But that's cute, though. Um, I did promise to show you the pieces. So here is the head and the body. And then I've actually got the opposite color of the horns. That's what this piece here is, is that's the horns. And then this piece here is going to be the muzzle, kind of the, what do they call that, his nose kind of thing. I know there's a word for it, I'm not grasping. But there's that, and then this little piece is the end of the tail. So this right here is his, this part, the nose. This right here is his horns, and then this is the spot on the end of his tail. In the stamp set, you'll notice that there is this piece right here. That's actually his nose. So if you take those pieces, that's his eyes and his horns, and this is his nose. See, that's the eyes. So obviously the eyes, you would know where to stamp those. But for the nose, it's this little kidney bean looking piece. And you want it to have the little divot on the top. And then you would ink up and see how that would be his nose. And then this other little piece would be the horns. And so then you would adhere those in the back. There's his tail. So does that make sense now? I just wanted you to know where all the little stamps go and what they do. Now we're ready to start, start constructing our barn. So to do the barn, what I want to do is angle the corners up there. And so the way I did that was to come in with a pencil and I'm marking one inch. So I'm measuring over four little squares, which each one of these squares is a quarter inch. And then one, two, three, four, and we're gonna go down to there. I'm going to do the same thing over here. We're going to go over four, one, two, three, four. And then we're going to come down four. And now I want to score between my two tick marks. So I'm just going to lay those points in the tray, the little track of our trimmer. And then I want to make sure I'm using the scoring and I'm going over it quite a few times because it is two layers because I want it to score front and back and I actually flipped it over and scored again you can kind of see where it is but it's obviously not as deep as it is on the front so I'm just giving it an extra little 
divot there. So now I've got it scored on both sides, front and back, left and right. Then what I want to do is obviously remove my little pencil marks. Although we probably won't see them by the time we put the edging on. But I'm going to push down here and push down here. So they're both going to fold into the middle. And then I'm just going to burnish. And so that gives us the start of our barn look. And then I'm going to want my wider one here. So I'm going to just start by going straight across the top. And then I'm just kind of estimating. Out there. So this one I'm going to go ahead and have it go all the way across. I'm not worrying about any mitering corners or anything yet. Because we don't need to really miter both of them. We can just miter one and it's going to look close enough. Because see now when I come in with this one, this is where we start worrying about the mitering. And so I'm noticing that with this angle, it's coming to about here. So I'm going to go from the corner to that section. And that's going to give me my mitered corner there. I'm off a little. Oh, I guess I am off a little bit. Okay, so I'm watching. So I wasn't quite right there, so I want this part to come off. There we go. Now it's lining up way better. Okay, and then I know that I wanted to come just off the edge. And it can't go too far because it's not going to fit in the envelope. So you need to be a little careful with that. This may be one you'll have to trim the edges off in order to get, get it into an envelope or maybe hand deliver. But I'm once again trying to stay flush with my edge here. And then let it run off over here. So it's right on the edge of my, I don't know what, fold, I guess, my score line here. Okay, so this one, doing kind of the same. And you don't even really need to miter the corners. I don't think that's totally necessary. I think it's part of my husband being a carpenter that like he would notice if I didn't. <laughs> I 
Okay, and because we had measured across and measured down an inch on that, we're gonna measure down in an inch on our inside layer as well. So I still cut it down a quarter an inch. I went, this is four and a quarter by five and a half. So this is four by five and a quarter. And I'm doing the same and then I'm going over an inch and down an inch. But this time I'm going to cut. And you can do this in the trimmer. Probably could have done it from the back side. I wouldn't need to erase my pencil marks. But that's going to make that fit in here and still have the same border all the way around. Okay, when I colored in the flowers, I used my Stampin' Blends. I used Old Olive, the Bronze, and Daffodil Delight. And they're, they're pretty small, so there's not a lot of room to do, you know, shading on them. But if we were to do shading, what we would do is follow the dark lines that the artist gives us and put the shadow in there. With the dark and then do the rest of it the light color. You could also color with the blends and then go in with a little bit of a dark and a light pencil over the top. If you've watched Alyssa, I know I've recommended her group Blends and Beyond, and she has some online classes you can take where she's really good at coloring. I mean, like really good. And her classes are like, I don't know, it was $10 Australian, so it was know, like six bucks in the U.S. It was like next to nothing and so worth it if you want to learn a little more about coloring with the blends. She's been taking some online classes where the instructor is teaching with Copics and then she's making the adjustments to work with the Stampin' Up! markers. And then her classes, of course, use the Stampin' Up! sets. So that's Blends and Beyond on Facebook. It's a private group, so you'll have to request entrance, but it's worth it. And I think if I truly wanted this to blend, I would be doing maybe one or two flowers at a time because the best way to make the markers blend is to work over them while they're still wet. So if the first color dries before you get there with the second one, they're not going to blend properly. Um, oftentimes I'll get people tell me it's not blending, it's not blending, and it's usually because they dry. And so adding more ink and more ink and more ink, I mean, you really want it wet and you want it to soak through all the way to the back side because it's making it bleed essentially, which is why the ink that we use should be the opposite of what we're coloring with. So if we are water coloring, then we want to use an alcohol-based ink, which would be stays on. And then if we're going to be using the alcohol markers, then we use the Memento Black, which is a water-based ink, because like mediums will blend. So we want all of our alcohols to blend. We don't want the water to blend. When we're water coloring, we want all of our watercolors to blend and not the alcohol outline. So I'll go back in later and do the leaves, but it would be the same kind of thing that I would go in and give a little bit of accent in the middle of the leaf where that dark line is
maybe on an edge and then come back in with the second one. And you go right over the top of the original ink. So I don't know if you can tell on my little leaves there, but they did blend fairly well. So I will finish coloring that later, but we are to the point where we can at least stick it in and see what I mean about it going all the way through to the back side. It should do that. So don't worry if it starts doing that to you, you're doing it right. I just ran out of my seal. So I'm going to go ahead and take that out. And then every time I take that out, and sometimes I'll even take it out in between and I clean. I'll often grab an alcohol wipe or a cotton ball and some rubbing alcohol and clean all of the, the goobers. See, you want all of this off of your case because that has a tendency to grab at the new adhesive that's coming across on the tape and that will make it stick and unravel in an odd way and cause lots of headaches. But you want to save your case always because you get refills and they're going to be less expensive. They're going to come in these little sealed pouches. And actually the case for the Stampin' Seal and the Stampin' Seal Plus are the same case. And so if you were saving some money and you only wanted to buy one case, then you would save your little pouches and then you would put the one you're not using into here. Oh. But that's how easy it is to refill those. So now we're ready for our barn door. So I've got these pieces that have the adhesive strip on the back side. So I'm going to peel back some of that. And then I know I, that I don't want the barn door way up here. Just from looking at pictures of barns, I know I want it a little lower. But I want it big enough that it's not going to make my cows look kind of odd. And then however, like looks like I'm, what, one, two, three, four, an inch in. So one, two, three, four, an inch in over here. And then I'm always flipping it over and cutting from the back side. Now, again, this would be really easy to miter if you wanted to because it's the same distance, you know, if it's an inch or a quarter inch this way, it's going to be a quarter inch this way because it's a right angle. So that's easy. The one across the top wasn't that easy because it wasn't a right angle. Well, that looks like I'm not the same height. Lovely. Okay. To go this way. This one's a little tall. That's what I get for estimating, right? Then I wanted one that was going to go straight across the middle. And then I wanted one that was going to go in an angle. This looks like it's a little too short. I 
can feel it. Haha, I was picking up the wrong side. Go figure. Huh? Now I'm not being really fussy with my corners over here because I'm going to be putting the cows over the top and that's going to hide any little boo-boos. So if I wasn't on camera, it'd be coming out better. And if you want that to be more presentable, <laughs> Um, take a little more time with it. But like I said, I'm just trying to work through this for you guys. And since we know we're covering it up with the cows and won't see it, I'm not going to stress. Okay, I went ahead and I cut some grass ahead of time. And this grass is actually from the Sending Love dies. A few weeks ago, we worked with this... Um, mailbox set and I use this grass here. The grass only cuts on the upper side so you would have your strip of your green and then a straight edge and then you lay this down however high that you want your grass blades to be. So you could make it really tall if you wanted to, or you could make it really short if you wanted to, but it's not going to cut this edge. And I know we did a class on the Jungle Pals dies as well. And I heard someone say that they were worried that it didn't, their Jungle Pals tree didn't cut on the one side. And again, that was on purpose so that you could make the tree as wide as you wanted. And it was doing some dry embossing in the middle. But if you took that die and then you flipped it and you did it on the other side, so you had your tree branches on this side and then your tree branches on this side, you could make a full trunk instead of a partial trunk. So that was on purpose. Go ahead and lay down our grass. Again, another thing covering up our little boo-boos at the bottom. So nobody's gonna see them. I laid it down and then I'm gonna come from the back side where I have that contrast and I can see where I need to cut off the excess. I'm gonna put down one layer of grass and then I'm gonna lay down my cows and then I'll put the second one over the top and then the, they'll look like they're standing in the grass. I'm going to use some glue dots to put the cows down flat. But then I'm going to put the heads on with dimensionals. And these were really easy to color. I just came in with my dark basic black. I'm just coloring in my spots. They make these with Holsteins. Is that the ones that have the that are black and white that give the milk? That's mostly what we have around here. And then you can color his nose and maybe inside his ears with either 
the bubble bath or the petal pink. This is a dark smoky slate. It's a light bubble bath. Thank you to Sherry for sharing the video. I appreciate that. Um, anytime that you share or like or um, comment on my videos, it helps me be seen. It tells the YouTube algorithms that I'm interesting and they should send people out to watch me. So thank you for that. You also want to put in hashtag prize patrol because that's how you get entered into the drawing because somebody will get today's card mailed to them as a thank you for being one of our guests and watching. I'm going to use a mini behind the heart because those just fit a little better. Oh, and then we have the loft window to do. And this one does not have adhesive, so... Using just a little bit of the glue. Don't need much. See what a difference that makes when you put them in the grass instead of just on the grass. So I'm doing this one at one and an eighth square. And this one is a little smaller. So I'm going to say seven eighths. Could do one inch and then three quarters of an inch, something around there.
and there we go. There is our finished card. Using the cutest cows bundle. Thank you. I usually have written directions in my store. I have not finished the bundle for this one yet, but it's been really adorable and I've already made several cards. So there will be written tutorials for available for purchase in my store um, soon. Because I can already tell from my customers that they're going to want one of these. Um, of course, if you were to purchase from my store, if you're one of my paying customers, I usually give those away for free. Um, also, if you place an order within my store and use the hostess code, I would mail you a PDF of six tutorials because I have a monthly customer appreciation bundle I give out every month for those who order. And then I'm also going to start doing a little card kit. So one of the cards I'm making next month, anybody who orders this month, like $40 or more, will get a the little pieces mailed to them so they can craft along with me in one of my cards for next month. So has everybody got hashtag prize patrol? entered into the comments. I do have the computer in the background collecting everybody's name. And so we will give that a spin and see who today's winner is. And then I do have next week's card. So hang out for a minute. We'll find our winner and actually not next week, next Thursday. <laughs> it's this week still. There we go. Christy is our winner. Congratulations, Christy. You're going to want to pop over to my website, queenbeecreations.net. And then you will see the host codes always in the top banner on there. But you're going to want to go into the address bar and you're going to put slash prize patrol. Um, after the queenbeecreations.net, that's going to take you to a Google form where you will fill that out and um, give me the address on where you want your prize mailed to. So congratulations to Christy. And let me get back over here and I'll show you next week's or next time's card. It's not next week. It's next Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing this wiper card. And so once again, we're using the cutest cows bundle and we're making this cute little card and it makes this guy pop up. So that's what we're doing on Thursday is you're figuring out how we make this little creature pop up in between them. So come back on Thursday and find out how to make this card, which will also be in my written tutorial. Oh, congratulations, Christy. Looks like she loves cows and had a field full when she was a kid. So it sounds like that was just meant to be. Okay, so I will see you back here, same time, same channel on Thursday to make our little wiper card. You can go over to YouTube and you can click the notify me and it should send you a little reminder as well. So that's already scheduled. I'll see you then. Bye.